It's John T. Boy. Yo, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy Jaunty. Welcome back to the channel. I am back with a new video. I hope you guys had a nice weekend. For me, I was a little under the weather again with a little sore throat. Well, your boy's coming back strong. Anywho, for this video, we're going to be talking about something that I've been getting into a lot of situations with, with my clients lately. I'm not doing this just to bash them at all, but this is more of a... A tip video for anyone who doesn't want to make any mistakes while they're recording but before we get into that you know i gotta do a funko pop of the day now this is nothing new this is shirley bennett from community which i revealed last week but the reason why i want to reveal her again is because i finally got it autographed by yvette nicole brown and that's proof of it being gsa authenticated Yep, Yvette Nicole Brown, she plays on a lot of sitcoms, a bunch of films, and she don't get the credit that, that she deserves. And I decided to get this signed by her. I finally got it signed, so shout outs to her. Okay, now for this video, it's nothing personal. It's just a, I want to make sure that whoever watched this, whether you're an artist, an engineer, or an aspiring musician, whatever the case may be, I want to make this video for you guys so you guys won't make the same mistakes that I've made or anyone else made because you know music is a trial and error process. You're going to make mistakes eventually. You know, it's inevitable. You always make mistakes, but you take those mistakes and you turn them into lessons so you won't make them same mistakes again. So by all means, I'm going to give you guys some tips on how to record the proper way. Now, the first tip is mic placement. When you're recording, make sure you're not recording behind the mic because I've dealt with that before, probably my first or second year of recording. Um, I've always wanted to make sure that, that the microphone was in front of me because I used to have microphones that wouldn't turn all the way on the, um, the microphone stand. So there were times that I had to move a little bit to the side so I could face the microphone directly so with that being said, always focus on mic placements. Make sure you're facing the diagram of the microphone. So in that way, you get a full and natural sound of your voice. The second tip is monitoring your levels. When I say monitoring your levels, check the metering on your DAW or your mixer. Make sure while you're recording, you are in the sweet spot. Don't go past negative six. I would say negative six as the highest and negative 24 as the lowest. I would never recommend recording that low because if you do and, you're, and, and, and your engineer is, re, is mixing and he's forced to turn it up or add more plugins that's gonna increase the volume, it's gonna turn up the noise floor. And if you record too loud, that's gonna create distortion. You're damaging the audio signal, which is there is no way to fix that besides re-recording your vocals. I've had so many clients of mine that always make the same mistake. And I always tell them you gotta re-record it. The third tip is not to be too close to the mic or too far from the mic while you're recording because best believe if you're too close to the mic you're creating a proximity effect on your vocals and if you're too far from the mic you're creating so much background noise and I recently had an artist who recorded everything pretty much an, a, a 12 track album and most likely every track that he recorded on there was so much background noise. Of course you could use noise reduction plugins but they don't necessarily fix the problem right away sometimes it doesn't fix it completely because if you're taking a lot of background noise in your vocals best believe it's going to affect your vocals as well it's going to make your vocals sound very dull sometimes it's just best for you to re-record your vocals and you do it the proper way next time now the fourth tip is to record your vocals flat what i mean by flat is if you have an audio interface a preamp or a mixer and it has a high pass filter button on it or even your microphone because some microphones even have that as well if you enable that button it's going to take out at least 60 to 80 hertz of the low frequencies of your voice and sometimes it might make your vocals sound too bright i have an artist that i'm currently working with and his voice is already high he sings and raps but when he sends me his vocals and I work on it, sometimes he tells me that his vocal sounds too bright, there's too much air, too much presence. Sometimes he even tells me that his vocals sound like they're, you know, they're coming from an intercom. Best believe, that's because he doesn't have any bass in his voice. And I'll show you for instance. As you guys can see, 
I'm using the F6 RTA plugin from Waves and the Fail Filter Pro Q3 by Fail Filter. And I'm playing them both at the same time. Now I want you guys to pay a close attention and look directly to the left side of the EQs. Say them east side girls, bust it open, bust it open. Say them west bank girls, shake on the stick. Did you see anything popping from the left? That's because he's lacking bass. Now, if you were a recording artist and you don't have any bass in your voice at all, that could be a problem. Some people might argue, why not just turn up the bass? And boom, you have a little bass right there. But if I boost so much bass in someone's voice that doesn't have any bass in their voice at all, you could create background noises as well. So you got to be very careful. Same thing with the Pro Q3. If I play it back, Said them east side girls, bust it open, bust it open. Said them west bank girls, shake on the stick. Not much volume is coming from the low frequencies in, in this range here. I would say this is about 40 kilohertz. Just about between 40 and 50. Not much bass is coming from that range, and that's not good. So for anyone who's recording their vocals and they have buttons where it can make things easier for them to, to get a, a better sound that, they, that they're trying to aim for, I would highly recommend recording your vocals flat. Same thing for this microphone. It has a high pass filter feature on it. I put that on so I want to make sure that my voice is not too deep because I, I already have a lot of bass in my voice. And another reason for you to record your vocals flat is because it will give you a very good, authentic and natural sound from your voice. It will be your true performance. It would be easier for the engineer to edit, to mix. It would be easier on me if you think about it. Last but not least, I would say record in a nice room. A room that is, that is acoustically treated very well. Me, I like to record in, in, in my closet because I have books, clothes, and even boxes that can capture your voice if it spreads out. If you do that in an open room, your, your, your vocals are going to spread out even further, creating a whole bunch of background noise. It's going gonna, it's gonna to create a lot of space between yourself and how far your room is. Trust me when I say, don't do that. I would even recommend using a Chaotica eyeball. Try that because it works. There are so many people that I work with that don't know exactly what they're doing. Some people think that recording music, pretty much making music is supposed to be an easy job. It isn't, trust me. Same way for mixing, mastering music, it is not easy. Nor is it as hard as long as you know what you're doing. And, and this is a little extra tip I wanna to give to everybody that I'm working with or for anyone who works with other engineers. If you're sending your music to get mixed and mastered by someone else, make sure there are no effects added to it. Cause trust me, I've had so many artists that send me their music and they sometimes accidentally leave certain, pl certain plugins or certain effects. I had a, a guy who raps and sings very nice, very nice with the bars but he, he left a flanger effect to it. And he didn't even know what a flanger effect is. For artists who don't know what they're doing, you have to know this stuff. You have to know a lot of things. So it'd be easier for you to communicate with your engineer and tell them exactly what you wanna do. Communication is key. Well, that's about it. I just wanna get this out there for anyone who are very curious on what to do when it comes to recording music and what to do before and after getting the mix and master. Cause best believe, this could drain your engineers. I've had my moments where I was stressed out, work kept building up in the studio and I was far behind and things happen in your personal life that, that gets in the way of your work life. So, I mean, you know, I'm not doing this to bash anybody. This is, this is more of an educational tip for you guys. Make sure to follow these tips and if you're not so sure, you can go on my website and look at the the, the guidelines for pre-mixing and mastering. So it'll tell you, it'll show you and explain to you exactly what to do and how to do it before sending it out for mixing and mastering. That's all I want to say. You guys have a blessed one. I love you. God loves you more. Stay blessed. Oh yeah. Peace out.